Design patterns are tried and true solutions to common programming challenges. In this video and corresponding ebook chapter, A Challenge of Creation. Games often dynamically spawn or create a variety of things during gameplay. Take, for example, a script that spawns and respawns various power ups in a level. At first, we might only have a couple, like health or a speed boost. But as we come up with more varieties of power ups, like invincibility or armor, we have to make changes to our spawning class since it has to manage the instantiation logic for all these different types. The open close principle states that classes should be open for extension but closed for modification. A class like this is in violation of the open close principle. It's like a high maintenance piece of equipment that always needs to be opened up and sprawled out on your desk because it needs to be modified whenever there are changes. The solution is the factory design pattern. Separate the logic of creating objects from the places where those objects are used. In essence, the responsibility of object creation is delegated to a special factory class, an object that creates objects. Rather than the spawner being a constant project, it's closed up and open to creating any power-up we like. The system is open to extension, more power-ups can be easily added to our game, and closed to modification, new power-ups don't require any changes in our various spawners. Let's take a look at a more detailed example. In the scene, we have Sophie, a character from the Practical Accessibility course on Unity Learn. Imagine we're creating a mini-game where Sophie's doing stand-up comedy, telling different kinds of jokes on a stage. When the player clicks this Tell Joke button, a method is triggered in a script called Comedian Behavior that delivers a random joke of a certain type. Each instantiated joke implements an interface called iJokeTeller. The interface requires two things, a dialog component to display the joke, and an implementation of a Tell Joke method that tells each joke. Alright, that's good. However, if we add a new kind of joke, say a knock-knock joke, we run into the same issue we had with the power-up spawner. We have to open up this script and modify the switch statement. What if we want another character who has their own complete set of possible jokes and joke types? We can't use this comedian behavior script, so things aren't very swappable or extensible. A simple factory solution could be to extract the creation logic, the switch statement, and put it into its own class. However, we can get even more modularity and flexibility by using the factory method version of the factory pattern. In the factory method, we define a common interface or an abstract class with a method for creating an object. For example, a create power up method for power up factories, create enemy for enemy factories, or in this case, create joke for joke factories. The comedian behavior script can then utilize this creation method to tell any kind of joke without needing to know the specifics of how the joke was created. Let's first look at exactly what a joke is. I have prefabs for different jokes that implement iJokeTeller. Jokes tend to follow a formula, and this class tells a why did the chicken joke. The classes have strings for the joke text. This text is set on the prefab. I'm not using scriptable objects in order to keep this simple. We have the implementation of the dialog component property and the tell joke method, which starts a coroutine for the lines and timing of the joke. The dialog box is enabled. The first line of the joke is told, and then we have a punchline before the dialog text is disabled and the object is made inactive. Walks into a bar joke is similar, but in this tell joke implementation, we have the walks into a bar joke text and delivery timing. We want to create different kinds of jokes that can be told with the same iJokeTeller interface, so we create an abstract joke factory with an abstract create joke method that returns iJokeTeller. In order to have different characters tell different kinds of jokes, we'll need to derive different kinds of concrete joke factories from the space class in order to create the different jokes. So I have two concrete implementations of the factory. The why did the chicken joke factory creates, you guessed it, a why did the chicken joke, or it's more like a why did the something joke. And then we have the walks into a bar joke factory, which creates a walks into a bar joke. Factories are concerned with things related to creation. In this case, the comedian's dialogue text component is set for the tell joke method to use. Since the same method can be used for different kinds of jokes, all the comedian behavior script needs to do is keep some list of joke factories and call create joke. This script will work on any comedian and could just as easily work for a heckler in the audience. So let's take a look at a diagram in the ebook because if you followed along, you now know all the parts of the factory pattern. The joke factory is the factory. I joke teller is the I product that the products, the jokes, implement. Concrete factories walk into a bar joke factory inherits the joke factory, which provides the factory method for creating a product. 
The ebook demo project has clearly named examples for each design pattern. If all this is new to you, it should be much easier to go through the book and the demo project from here. The book's example is a common game dev use case with sound effects and particle system. Also, the book includes some recommendations of ways you can work with the patterns. First on the list for the factory pattern recommendations is to use dictionaries. And you may have noticed that in the stand-up example, we didn't get to telling a joke by type. So I'd like to complete the example using a dictionary for the joke type. To create a joke by type, I'll make a factory of factories called general joke factory. A dictionary, joke factories by type, will be created from a list of joke types and a list of concrete factories. Flexibility between type and factory works well here because a type of joke could mean the subject of the joke, like jokes about animals or Halloween jokes. On start, the dictionary is initialized from the lists. Then we can do a method similar to the factory method where we return an iJokeTeller from a joke factory that is from the dictionary of the type the comedian wants. So all the comedian needs to do is invoke create joke based on type from the general joke factory. And then, of course, the comedian can tell the joke. That wraps up our exploration of the factory pattern. As we saw, the pattern is incredibly versatile and can be applied in everything from managing common game elements like sound effects and particle systems to more conceptual implementations, as in creating a stand-up comedy game. If you're looking to do some more factory work, check out the free ebook and the demo project examples. These videos are meant to complement that content so that when you read the ebook or anything on the patterns, you already have a good feel for the concepts.